G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here, and today I want to talk to you about a monopod by Three Legged Thing. Do we love things by Three Legged Thing? Put it in the comments below. First of all, big shout out to my mate Pete. Pete um, bought this and said, Would I like to do a review on it? So he lent it to me, and as he lent it to me, he said, I've not yet opened it. Just take a moment to savor that. This is the initial unboxing of a monopod that has not even be opened by its owner. Boom, fresh as it comes, folks. So we're looking to see if this, which is called the Trent Punk, Punk Trent, Punk Trent monopod made of magnesium alloy is well, what it's like and whether it's something that you might want to think about purchasing should you need a monopod. So monopods are great for things like sports photography and wildlife photography. So what we're gonna do is just unpack it, look at it and then get out in the field when it's not raining to uh, to see. But you won't have to wait till it stops raining. I'm gonna have to wait till it stops raining, but you won't, it'll be a flash of a, of a transition. So at Coomba Bar Parklands today, this is a wildlife conservation park in the middle of the Gold Coast. It's one of the, the hidden gems of the coast. And the three reasons you might get a monopod is one, to support your gear. So sometimes if you're carrying around a 150 to 600 lens, it looks like this, it can be very heavy. And so it simply sits on here and you can rest it here and still use the monopod as you choose. Second is for stability. And so if you're holding after a while, you get the jelly arms and you're starting to shake and bake it a bit. But on this, you don't have that issue. It just sits nice and still and you can take a break. And then when you want to re-engage, it's right there ready to go. As a viewer of mine uh, helped me see, it's quite versatile. So you can put it in situations where you can't put a tripod that has a lot of spread. So that might be helpful for those of you that are considering do I buy this monopod or do I buy a monopod? How does it all work for me? Well, so there's two parcels that come with it. And the first is, oh, I'm not going to be able to put this back in the box to pretend to Pete that it's what it was like. Oh, Pete, I hope you enjoy the unboxing of this. Again, your thanks and your generosity. You get some cool stuff like that. Um, uh, you get a tool. These are really cool. Come with three-legged things, most of their products, and are very versatile. So uh, I'd encourage buying one of these full stop. And I've got a video about it. In terms of weight, it feels maybe like minimum height is 60 centimeters. So this is 60 centimeters, uh, which feels about right. It's got four leg sections, load capacity, a young child. 30 kilograms. Wow, that's some serious gear. It weighs 728 kilos. And when you put this little gem on, these are the legs, I think, and the stand, that adds another half kilos. So all up, 1.22 kilos. Maximum height is 2.02 meters. All right, so obviously I can't show you how big it is in the studio. Let me show you how big this is. Look at it. Look at it, it's over two meters. The reason they've made it like this is for giants. So if you are a giant, this is the monopod to get. Also, if you like to do a spare bit of pole vaulting or jousting, this is the monopod for you. But, oh, another knee, another knee would be a boom arm. How good's that, right. you impressed? If you've ever used three-legged thing, these feel like the classic tighteners for tripod legs, so you can undo all of them at once, and you can proceed. Whoa, that looks splendid. It slots together nicely. When it comes to attaching the monopod, have a look at this. Look at this. See that? That's a three-eighth that is spring-loaded to reveal a quarter twenty. So you can just stick your camera on the top, it doesn't matter what you have, stick it on top. Which brings me to my first point, and my first point of use and helpfulness to you is don't put a ball head on top of a monopod because it completely invalidates the stability that you might get from a monopod. If you've got a ball head flapping about in the wind, um, it's, it's another addition of complexity and stabilization that the monopod will have to wrestle with, and you don't need it. It's... 
Mmm, smells like new monopod. And we have a foam grip down the bottom. And if I unscrew that, I imagine you could easily put a spike in. Let's have a look at what's in the other box. Oh, you know what? After doing this review, I'm probably going to go buy one myself. The $89.99 US dollars. If you need a monopod, gosh, it looks like it's the jam. So these are the feet. This is what enables you to your monopod to stand stationary with your gear on top while you walk away or you have a break or whatever. As I played with this today, I've also found that some of the feet can actually inadvertently become unsecure. There's a clip, you push the clip and it clicks it in. And sometimes that can happen, which makes it a little bit wobbly. As you can see, it's freestanding, right? I, I, I wouldn't just like leave this for the day because a simple breeze or a knock, there's a high chance it can fall over. So just be aware. I think the mount like this is to um, give you some ease of use and to actually enable you to have a hands-off moment, but it's not for it to hold the camera still the entire day, especially if the ground is anything like dirt. Your camera could easily go for a six so when you think it's nice and secure. So this is helpful but not the answer if you're thinking I just want to stay and play. You can obviously use it sitting down or standing up or any variation in between and these are the feet and they pop down like this. They lock in and that locks in and that locks in. That feels firm and solid and nice and then I simply take my feet off here and it has a quarter 20 adapter on here that when I take that off reveals a three eighths. If I take that adapter off, it will screw right into the bottom. The benefit of the adapter is it lives right in the end, which gives you again, the two options should you need it. You can actually apply another monopod to this if you want a mega long boom or a four meter high <laughs> monopod. For those rare occasions when a four metre job does what a two metre job cannot do. Which it screws down nice and tight and once it's secure you can then tighten it by that orange thing and look at this. Wow you can even position it so you can have this base down and move your camera around in a gimbal like fashion should you choose to and I imagine if we screw that all the way down it locks it in so it's stationary oh that's firm on the ground and I can look at that like you can go all the way over to must be about 50 degrees or so all the way around that is more than you'll ever need and so you can have it planted on the ground but there's a shot over here you can pull it back and go there and if you're wondering about how do you handle a telephoto lens on the top of a monopod I would use the bracket here to actually change the orientation of your camera as it stays central so I wouldn't rely on the monopod to do that if I want to shoot vertical I'm gonna turn it like this if I want to shoot horizontal I'm gonna turn it like this and the Tamron as I imagine with most other lenses has these indicator marks to make sure you can actually uh, put it square and so when you put it on your monopod it's actually going to work really effectively for you. I love when stuff is cleverly designed isn't it good and then we've got a spot there so you can actually press these buttons here I think oh yep it lifts the legs up and you're free to roam because of the stop you can take that stop out and put a spike on should you choose to or if you lose that stop you can probably that put that stop on there's a ton of kangaroos around here which is why i chose to come here take some photos of them this morning and put the monopod through its faces but what i do want to say is when you're shooting with a monopod use your other two legs to stabilize it like it's actually a tripod and so you can leave the camera lean on you you can put your eye against here and actually create three points of contact with the ground and some stability for the unit. Now, obviously this is a little bit short. And so my final tip is to extend the tripod to the height you want, extending the larger parts first. I think that adds more stability to it. The top sections of the monopod before you do the bottom. So it uses the, the girth of the section to stabilize rather than the smaller girth of the lower section. It is really well made, it feels solid. It feels like you're getting your money's worth, especially if you're a monopod kind of person. And these are firm as they're locked in. They have rubber grips here. Um, the whole thing twists to lock. And this orange 
um, swivel enables you to lock the whole thing in. One of my, gee, it's easy for it just to spin, like that undoes it. Let me show you the only limitation with this monopod. What happens is you screw the feet on nice and easy. You just do that and it's on, right? And then you screw it up like this. Now the clamps, the screw clamps, to tighten the monopod so it doesn't move and extend, operate in a different direction than what you need to tighten this. The problem with that is, as you loosen these, you tighten this, but as you tighten this to the right height and you're moving it like this, you're actually at the same time loosening the bottom. And I'm just, I'm just not sure why three-legged thing didn't put all the screws on the same rotation pattern so that you tighten the entire thing up together and make it super tight and then you can loosen the whole thing should you choose to loosen. Um, but this way, every time you tighten this, you actually loosen this and then the, the whole monopod can come loose in your hand when you think it's actually connected to the feet. But I guess once you've got it set up, and especially if you want to roll that up and shoot like this, you can, you just put that all the way down and you're not going to be too worried about that. And then you can just go to different heights if you like. So you can roll this back and then tighten off and that that is staying best way to attach this camera or any camera to a monopod i've found is to put the is to choose the point that has the closest center of gravity and simply push up and turn the monopod don't worry about turning your camera around around just turn the monopod that easy every lens and camera setup has a center of gravity so here it's about here when i extend it look at this when i extend it to 600 it changes to here. Now, on a lot of zoom lenses, you have a couple of options. So if I know I'm gonna shoot mainly at 600, I wanna mount it to the center of gravity of the lens so that I have ease of use. Now, as I do this, there's not a, it doesn't fall over this way or this way. It actually stands pretty central. And I've not got the feet on at the moment. It's really good, it's really well made. I've never played with a monopod before. You know in Spain, where they do the bullfighting, Portugal as well, I think. And they get the red, red cape, and it attracts the bulls to them. I thought I would take that approach with my jacket this morning. I would wear a red jacket, and the kangaroos would be so switched onto it, they would charge at me, and as they charge at me, I would be able to take their photo with my uh, new monopod, even though it's not my new monopod, but the new monopod that I'm using. However, it's had the adverse effect, and there's less kangaroos than I've ever seen at Cuba Bar Park Homes, ever. And as I drove, drove up, I couldn't see any. I was like, oh man. And so um, I hope this isn't a sign of things to come and that they're actually hiding in the bush. And whether it's today or another day, they come out. Um, I hope we just haven't seen the majority of them already. There's a kangaroo over here, which I'm gonna shoot as. Really helpful to take your lens cap off too, if you're gonna shoot anything. You are getting a wealth, a wealth of experience and lessons today. I bet you didn't bargain for this if you stuck around. <laughs> oh, should I get one? Put in the comments below if I should get one. Or if you've got any other questions about it, which um, I've got it for like another couple of days and then it goes back to Pete. And so he might have to jump in and, and answer some of your questions. But it's well made and you can carry it around. Oh, not a bad bit of gear, is it? So I'm five foot ten. I always wish it was like six, that would be just handy and nice at times, but I'm five for ten. This is using the top, middle, and second last that fully extended, and it gives me the height that I need. You can just look through and shoot, so I'm pretty happy about that. On our way outside, I just wanted to bring your attention to the fact that I'm running some workshops, and one of them is an online editing workshop. And so if you'd like some help editing your photos or you'd like to know how I might edit your photos or you want to talk about the editing process anywhere in the world, we can get together online and there's a link in the description below. All you have to do is click that and you'll see some really cool options and I'd love to be part of your photographic journey even more so than on the tube. I think with using a monopod, you would use vibration reduction on your lens. You often don't with the tripod, but there is still a bit of movement and you do want a bit of movement. 
I hope you've enjoyed the back and forth nature of this video. It's been really helpful in seeing this in action as well as we talk about it in the studio. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, love a thumbs up. And if you want to be part of the channel, all you need to do is subscribe. Or you can even go that one step further and join. There's a join tab down there. You can click on that and have a look, see what's going on. Thanks so much, everybody. And thanks, Pete, for letting me unbox and use this before you did. I think you'll enjoy it, mate. Thanks everybody, see ya. Well, things like sports photography. I did say it was fresh.